<laughs> All right, today though, today, we're gonna look back at an early part of your career and discuss Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Oh, I thought you were going before that, and I was gonna say, man, look, <laughs> I was young. Um, yeah. Needed the money, you know the deal. Sometimes you do. Smoky Mountain <laughs> Wrestling. I'll be honest, I was, yeah, I'm familiar with it, of, of knowing Smoky Mountain and the wrestlers that came out of it, but it wasn't my territory growing up, so yep. it's not something that I actually watched a lot. So I'm excited, because today is going to be an education for, for, for me, and I'm excited about the schooling, and I think the fans will be excited. I'll probably be a little bit more quiet, let you just talk about a lot of these things. Okay. I, yeah, yeah, but shut me down if I, you know, or I'll probably ask you, you what was I talking about? Shut them down. When I say Smoky Mountain Wrestling, what's the first thing that immediately pops into your head? Jim Cornette. Like, it's, a, it's the first thing I think of. It's the last thing I think of before I go to sleep at night, and it's the first thing I think of when I wake up in the morning. Jim Cornette is, no, Jim Cornette. Obviously, Smoky Mountain Wrestling is a promotion formed by James E. Jim Cornette. Cornette's been a controversial figure in wrestling the last few years with his opinions on the current product. What's your relationship like with Cornette today? Um, I think it's good. Look, look, uh, Jim was always great to my family and, and, and was always great to me. And so I respect Jim. I think Jim has a ton of knowledge and a ton of uh, like historic knowledge in his mind and probably at his house in, in, uh, in tubs or, or, or something. But so we had one little thing where I said uh, wins and losses don't matter and the internet exploded and, uh, and, and it was kind of out of context but what, what I meant was uh, you know if, if Dean Ambrose is my guy, if, if John Moxley's my guy and John Moxley gets beat on TV one week John Moxley's still my guy so that was, my, that was the context of why I said wins and losses don't matter, like I'm a Kevin Owens fan Kevin, you know, he ain't been on a roll of, uh, of a winning streak lately, but he's great. He's great on the mic. Every mm -hmm. time he comes out, I want to watch him. So that was the context of, in which I said that. I had to cover that just to get to here. Um, somebody interviewed Jim one time, and it was a guy who was, you know, didn't like me anyway and was kind of posed the question weird, but Jim was like, well, that doesn't, that doesn't, uh, sound like Bob's boy to me or whatever and he said something but it was just Jim talking and it kind of rubbed me the wrong way but but I this is the first time he's probably hearing it uh it's the first time I'm just kind of saying it out loud um because I think it was my ego and and my pride and stuff that got hurt and that's you know that's superficial anyway that's that's no good um so I don't look at we never had a riff that when he talked he just said that and it rubbed me the wrong way. And so I thought like, hmm. but, um, and look, I think Jim's controversial because he says what he means and he means what he says. And he's a very good talker. Um, but you're going to get some four letter words and some nine letter words and some, you know what I mean? He's going to, he's going to be colorful in his language. And, and I think that's half the reason, you know what I mean? Like he used to, people used to say horrible things to each other and it wasn't the end of the world. Like I think only lately, like you said, in the last couple of years, he's become controversial because you're not allowed to say anything about anybody anymore. So I think, uh, where in theory, he was actually always a controversial figure. And even so I'm thinking attitude era and other times where WWE even brought him back for uh, yeah. quote, controversial on air and promos. And would give him, remember they would give him those, uh, shoot promos. Yeah. Style. Shoot promos. And I thought, man, that's some of the best stuff I've ever seen. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's look it's somebody talking trash but but it's somebody who's really good at it uh and that's jim Cornette, man and like i said he's got a great mind always treated my family well all the love in the world uh, for me for jim Cornette. the promotions formed when jim leaves wcw in 1991 talk to me about how the wrestling business was much different back then holy mackerel um not just the wrestling business the entire world uh definitely america um but 91 like that's like I was in combat in 91, you know what I mean? Like I was 24 years old or 25 years old uh, in 1991. My first son was born in 1991. That's so long ago, like everything's different. Um, but man, wrestling was very different. Uh, and, and as we'll see on some of the promos tonight, like I, I cut a white meat baby face promo that's laughable, but back then, a good guy was a good guy and a bad guy was a bad guy and there weren't so many tweeners you know what i mean right. and 
also we'll get into the fan base of Smoky Mountain Wrestling uh, in the future, which is also uh, awesome. A Southern-style promotion not named USWA had not been something that was successful after the expansion of the WWF and eventually JCP, Jim Crockett Promotions, turning into WCW. Did you think growing up in the business you would ever actually see the territories die? So, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't understand what the territories were because I just watched my dad. You know what I mean? Whatever wrestling my father was on, that's the wrestling I watched. So I didn't really, I wasn't, and, I, and look, just because I grew up in the business was my dad never, you know, we weren't allowed to go around the, in the dressing room and stuff like that. I had no idea what was going on. Well, I was terribly sad when all of my brothers got to break in in Southeastern or Continental and, and that was no longer there for me. However, that was my reality was I was, I was coming into the business when all that was happening. And so did I have a match in 1989 and, and a couple in 1990 and a, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I was in the business then, but I wasn't a full-time uh, professional wrestler forward slash sports entertainer at this time. And even prior to that, I didn't know what, what went on behind the scenes. I just knew my dad was a wrestler. And I wanted to do that too. Um, and by the time I got in there and running uh, full speed, the territories were gone, you know. And and do I wish they were here? Heck yeah, I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to work. And look, I got to work in, in in Memphis for USWA. You mentioned their name. I got to work there. I got to work a lot of independent shows. But but I would love to have gone to Oregon or you know what I mean and got to travel around and do six month deals when I was young. That would have been cool. You talked about earlier the fan base. So Mick Foley in his book said Smoky Mountain was old-time fans who still believed in good guys and bad guys and to whom cheating was still reason to get upset. Is this, is this an accurate statement? It's right on. It's right on the money. And look, for me, uh, when I wrestled in Canada and when I wrestled in Smoky Mountain, the fan base is very similar and 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 i'm not the only one who's who's kind of thought that before but but like southern wrestling fans and canadian wrestling fans remind me a lot of, of each other um they just like their wrestling and they don't they like to get caught up in it and it's okay um and they don't have to explain themselves to anybody um but yeah they have a strong fan base and and to mick's point they believe they didn't look. They probably didn't believe that it was real, but they believed if you screwed their good guy or their baby face, they were going to get mad about it, and they were going to stand up and they're going to yell at you. And you know what I mean? And that's, man, that's good old fashioned wrestling right there. With definitive baby faces and heels before shades of gray, you take on Cornette in singles matches, getting the victory. Is this when you really started to learn how to gaga? We, we, we saw the baby bonnet match. Is this where you get your education in some comedy wrestling? Well, look, I, I came up in the South with a lot of Southern wrestling. So I've seen my share of comedy wrestling, but, but, but this was my first foray into it. And, uh, and it, it, it did what we you call Gaga. We kind of called Shakespeare, and it's just kind of working the people and and getting the most out of every little thing you can. And so, yeah, this was my first foray into experiencing that. Uh, but like I said, I'd seen that uh, a bunch growing up in my in my life. What do you think the legacy of Smoky Mountain Wrestling is? Hmm. Man, I don't know. Look, I'd like to think it was something positive, and, and, and what a cast of characters you rattled off earlier. Uh, all those big talents that came through there. I, look, I think it's a, whether it closed or not, I think it was a successful territory in a time where territories were all dead. Um, and, and I guess you could, your, your uh, description of, or your definition of successful is debatable, but I think it was. It tried to do something that was no longer being done, and that that kind of had been squashed out, and that was the territories, and Cornette had a little money and had the guts and said, let's try to do this again and see if we can't make it work, and he made it work for a little while. It just wasn't sustainable because of the way the world was changing. Any bad experiences while there? No. No, I, I honestly didn't have any, like, I, everything was gravy. And uh, Any yeah, favorite man, was, memories we haven't talked about? 
Um, let me think. Oh, look, so we, you know, I was young, and we, you can imagine, in, uh, in that part of the world, we partied. And so I won't, I won't go into too much detail, but the Rock and Roll Express, uh, Ricky Morton remembers a few things in Johnson City, Tennessee. Uh, there, were, there were some great times. Um, but look, most of them were in the ring. Um, Does it or, rhyme with your friend Georgie? It, no, but it does rhyme with Enos. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Elvis the Pelvis had a brother named Enos. Uh, he, he didn't. 